Welcome back to Water Quality in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, we are covering uh, five units on the oceans right now. And in this uh, section on the oceans, uh, we're, we've talked about acidification of oceans and coral reefs in the ocean. Uh, today we're going to move on to uh, topic C for our third lecture. We're going to talk about mangroves. Now the term mangrove can refer to one of several things. It can refer to a habitat and an entire plant assemblage. That's usually what we do. It refers to all trees and shrubs in a mangrove swamp. Here's a typical picture of a mangrove swamp, uh, mangrove area uh, taken near desk. I took it in 2011. Mangroves can also refer to the mangrove family of plants, or the plants Rhizophoraceae, or just the genus of mangrove plants, the genus Rhizophora. So, mangroves are, are the term mangroves are used in many ways, but we're basically talking about the mangrove uh, biome, which is a biome on the edge of the oceans and on the land system. Here's a typical look at a mangrove forest along the coastline. Uh, you've got dense shrubs, trees, and you've got roots uh, from the mangrove uh, trees that basically put themselves down into the sediment. Mangroves are usually pretty uh, shallow uh, because uh, in this picture here, uh, you can see a person, uh, the, the sediment's only about two and a half uh, feet uh, below the surface of the water. Uh, mangroves accumulate sediment. So in time, the mangrove swamp fills up. The mangroves move out to deeper water. It's a, it's a very unique habitat. We consider mangroves one of the eight major ocean-based biomes on our planet. Mangroves typically occupy tidal areas between the land and the oceans in both tropical and semi-tropical regions of the world. Uh, when we move out of semi-tropical regions, uh, it's not warm enough for the mangrove-type plants. So we only really see them in the tropics and the subtropics. Here's a picture of a mangrove forest at low tide. At low tide, you can see uh, the plant roots, uh, very characteristic of a mangrove swamp. You can see these, this massive root system. Collectively, mangroves are tropical or subtropical coastal vegetation consisting of species that are tolerant to salts, saline tolerant plant species. Uh, they're basically salt tolerant trees, we call them haliophytes, that are adapted to the harsh coastal conditions where you often have a mix of fresh water and salt water. Uh, not many things grow in salt water, but mangrove species are well adapted. So along the coastline, in many tropical and subtropical areas of the world, you do have mangrove forests. Uh, they're very characteristic. Here's a picture of a, uh, a guy in a boat uh, going through a mangrove forest in the country of Colombia. Now mangroves have some unique things about them that are very important for the ocean and for the land. Mangroves have a complex salt, salt filtration system. These trees just normally don't want to grow in salt. They're just adapted to grow into salt water. They have a very complex root system, and they're adapted to low oxygen conditions of the mud or the waterlogged mud that they grow in. So three unique things. They have a compl complex salt filtration system, a complex root system, and they're adapted to the low oxygen conditions of the mud they grow in. This allows them to cope with salt water immersion, and it also allows them to cope with the wave action that you see in coastal areas. If we look at the uh, next picture, uh, here's a lone mangrove shrub right here, uh, right off the, the uh, mainland here, and you can see this complex root system that digs itself down into the waterlogged mud. Very unique systems. 
So the mangrove biome is a distinct coastal woodland biome that's characterized by a depositional coastal environment. As sediments come off the land, the mangroves trap that sediment. That fine sediment is collected in areas that are protected from high wave energy action. And the mangroves themselves kind of limit the high wave energy action. It makes a calm environment. It makes a very good environment for a lot of organisms. Again, here's a mangrove. Uh, I took this picture in uh, the country of Bonaire, uh, in the Caribbean, uh, just north of, the, of Venezuela. You can see that you're definitely in a woodland environment, a swampy environment. You're along the coastline, and you can see these mangrove trees that have basically just taken over. So you have an intertidal water environment, and it ranges from what we call brackish water, which is just salt, slightly salty, to pure seawater that might contain 3 to 4 percent salt. Where evaporation is very intense, very hot conditions, we may have the water actually have two times the salinity of normal ocean water. So you have trees living in a pretty harsh environment from brackish water all the way to water that's twice as salty as the ocean. I have a few pictures to show you during this lecture of the mangroves in Bonaire. Uh, Bonaire National Marine Park is famous. Uh, Bonaire is famous for scuba diving. Uh, Bonaire has done a very good job at protecting the mangrove forest that it has. A characteristic of the mangroves uh, that we already mentioned is that these mangrove trees have massive roots, a very extensive root system, and these anchor the plants into this water-laden mud. And uh, as you could expect, these roots create quite a nice habitat for certain organisms. And because of that, you'll find out that mango mangroves are one of the most biologically diverse biomes on the planet. Mangroves aren't that extensive compared to other biomes. In 2015, it was estimated that there were about 49,000 square miles of mangroves in the world. Now, this is distributed across countries in the tropics and the semi-tropics. So actually, 118 countries actually counted or reported that they had some mangroves. Well, why do we talk about mangroves uh, when we talk about the oceans? Uh, we talked about coral reefs as an important biome. Mangroves are basically considered just as important as coral reefs. First, they're on the border between the land and the oceans in the tidal areas. You can predict where they should be. This means two things. They protect the ocean from sediment. Remember, sediment is uh, pretty tough on oceans. Sediment causes a lot of problems. But the mangroves trap a lot of the sediment coming off the land and uh, they grow in it. And it protects the ocean from some of the erosive forces from the land. So in a way, mangroves help to keep the oceans clean. Again, we look along the coast. Here's some mangrove roots for trees. You can see the thick roots. And you can see that basically these roots armor the coast. They protect the coast. And any sediments coming off the land those sediments, as they move toward the ocean, slow down, and a lot of them fall out of the water, and the mangroves capture them and make new land. So they protect the land. They armor the land from storms and hurricane-type events. So they're very good uh, for the land, and they're very good for the ocean. Despite the fact that mangroves cover a very small area and they're confined to the tropical and subtropical regions of the world, they're very, they are very important. They're very biologically diverse. So they armor the coasts and they're very biologically diverse. Lots of aquatic and land-based species depend on the mangrove swamps.
here's a picture I took. It's not very clear, but you can see that here's some mangrove roots along the coast, and you've got oysters that have found homes along the mangroves. And uh, if you go on a trip and you see mangroves, you will be amazed at the biological life that lives on the roots and between the roots. You'll see turtles, you'll see birds, you'll see all kinds of land and water-based organisms. So again, the habitat is very biologically diverse. Large numbers of fishes spend their early lives entwined in the mangrove roots. It gives them protection. Large numbers of oysters and other hard-shelled organisms have an ideal habitat here. So if you see a lot of fish, you see a lot of oysters and hard-shelled creatures, there's a lot of biodiversity here, which means a lot of other organisms depend on this too. You'll see all kinds of birds in here looking for fish, uh, looking for other aquatic types of organisms. If you take a look at the roots, you've got these huge armor roots that basically protect the shoreline. But if you keep on looking a little bit closer, you can see that there are a lot of fibrous roots that go down in the water, sucking up nutrients and doing things like that. Here you've got an oyster uh, hidden on the back of this particular root. So it's very biologically diverse. Remember, this is a warm environment. Another picture of a root. Here you've got a huge oyster colony of this taken root. They need, a, they need a solid base, and they've got that in the mangroves. So with all this fish and shellfish type of life, the amount of bird life and bird diversity is extremely high. If we take a look at the ocean-based bi biomes, after coral reefs, mangroves have the highest diversity of the ocean-based biomes. And the ocean-based biomes would include some pretty uh, uh, important areas like tidal zones, uh, estuaries, coastal oceans, lots of things. But only the coral reefs are probably more biologically diverse than mangroves. So let's look at the ecology of mangroves for a little bit. Mangroves, there are probably a hundred species of plants that are considered to be part of a mangrove ecosystem. However, a typical mangrove swamp, as far as trees are concerned, isn't that biologically diverse. There's only a few mangrove species that actually exist in a particular mangrove forest. For instance, uh, the diversity of the trees in the mangrove uh, forest isn't great. In the Caribbean, a mangrove swamp, and most of the islands in the Caribbean originally had mangroves around their entire coastal area. In the Caribbean, a mangrove swamp may be composed of only three to four mangrove species. Not a lot of biologically diver diversity, but you got to remember, it was pretty tough for these species to evolve and adapt to this condition. So they're, they're specialists. We go to Southeast Asia, a mangrove swamp is a little bit more diverse. Instead of having only three to four main species, uh, you probably see eight to a dozen mangrove species in a Southeastern Asia mangrove forest. So you get a little tree, you put it out, or, or it naturally... Uh, takes root in a shallow area off the coast. Once established, these mangrove roots provide oyster habitat and they provide slow water flow and that enhances sediment deposition. Now, if you remove the mangroves, the collected sediment is disturbed it's churned around and ends up in the ocean, and we know that sediment in the ocean is not a good thing. And the system will rapidly break down. As mentioned before, mangroves protect coastal areas. They're vital for the land in tropical and subtropical areas. They protect the coastline from erosion, they protect the coastline from storm surges, and they protect the coastline from massive storms such as hurricanes or tsunamis.
they're the armor that protects the coasts in these subtropical and tropical areas. So you can begin to see how important mangroves are. As mentioned before, mangrove root systems are effective at dissipating wave energy. So they slow the flow of water down. That reduces the erosive forces, forces along the coast. Because they capture sediment coming off the land, as sediment is deposited, mangroves will build their own environment over time. So they basically increase the land base. This is looking off the coast of Bonaire. We have some sediment deposition that's occurred off the coast here. And once the water gets shallow enough, all of a sudden you see these little mangrove trees taking root. Putting their roots down, the more root mass you see, the more sediment will be de deposited. And eventually this will convert to a nice mangrove swamp, and then eventually land. This unique ecosystem, which is basically we're talking about a mesh of intertwined roots, offers a quiet marine environment for young organisms that are permanently submerged. And within the mangrove, I don't have pictures that I took of each of them, but I found pictures. You'll see a lot of algae living just under the uh, surface of the water in mangroves. Algae are productive. They uh, blue-green algae are photosynthesized. Uh, mangroves are really important for barnacles. Here's an example of some barnacles in a mangrove swamp just below the surface. As mentioned before, mangrove swamps are also important for oysters. And I showed you oysters attached to several plants. Uh, here's another picture of you just have a colony of oysters. They're protected. Uh, they, they can, root, they can uh, stick themselves to these big massive mangrove roots so they have a solid place to live. The mangroves slow the water down. Yet there are nutrients floating around, so they're able to filter out uh, some of these nutrients for themselves. Mangroves are also important for sponges. Most of us have not seen sponges unless we're scuba divers, but they're very important organisms in the ocean ecosystem. And this is one of the things that mangroves are really good at protecting. Bryozoans, uh, you find them in the mangrove swamps. Uh, they're important. You usually think of them a little bit deeper in the ocean, but uh, they'll be plentiful in mangrove swamps. And then when we go to some of the uh, more life that we think of along the coasts in the oceans, uh, let's look at shrimps. Uh, shrimp is a really good environment. Mangroves are a really good environment for shrimp. And here's an example of a shrimp wandering around in a mangrove swamp. And you'll find some organisms a little bit larger. Uh, you'll think, find things like mud lobsters. There's a mud lobster. So you find all kinds of organisms thriving in a mangrove swamp. And this is not even talking about the little fish that are spawning and living in the protected waters of the mangrove it says nothing about the dozen of uh, the hundreds of species of birds that depend on mangroves for their food. So this is a unique environment. You got algae, barnacles, oysters, sponges, bryzoans. They need hard surfaces, which the mangrove swamps provide. Oftentimes these hard surfaces are the actual thick uh, mangrove roots themselves. And then because they collect sediment, organisms that thrive on muddy bottoms, such as shrimp and mud, mud lobsters, thrive there too. So basically, 
are mangrove swamps. Some people call them mangrove plantations. Uh, in places, mangroves are actually planted because they host important species of fish and crustaceans. Mangroves are an important source of blue carbon. Uh, it's believed they stored about a huge amount of carbon in 2017. So we see all the pluses for mangroves. Now some of the uh, problems with mangroves is that we've lost about half the mangrove forest in the world in the last 50 years. Uh, people cut down mangroves in coastal areas. Why? For harbors, for cities, for recreation. One of the biggest problems with mangrove loss in Southeast Asia is that uh, they've turned the, man the mangrove areas with the uh, muddy bottoms. They cut the mangroves down and they use it for shrimp farming because you've created those, mod uh, those, uh, those muddy uh, bottoms and it's ideal for shrimp. Well, let's get rid of the trees and let's just make a commercial uh, shrimp farm. And a lot of the shrimp that we import in the United States from Southeast Asia comes as a result of mangrove forests being destroyed so they can take advantage of the muddy bottoms or the muddy sediment or the sediments that mangroves accumulated. So again, to take a look at the attributes, if we look at the biology of mangroves and look at some of the attributes, they ad they're adopted to low oxygen sediment. A lot of plants need oxygen. Mangroves get their oxygen from above the water surface. Uh, they're able to filter salt out so they can live in a saline environment. And uh, they reduce their water loss. They have reduced transpiration system. So uh, they don't desiccate very much when it's hot and dry. Now we saw some of the roots in pictures. You have aerial roots that allow mangroves to absorb gases from the atmosphere. And when we talk about gases, oh, we're talking about oxygen, we're talking about carbon dioxide, we're talking about nitrogen gases. So they get some of their nutrients uh, directly from the atmosphere and the uh, roots above the ground do this. Now, to flourish for the next generation of mangroves, they've adapted to increase the survival of their offspring. Uh, mangrove seeds are buoyant. They float on the surface of water and they float until they get to a muddy spot and the uh, mangrove seed germinates and you've got more mangrove plants. Very well adapted uh, species. Now humans usually uh, know mangroves uh, by color, although it's not very obvious. Uh, we have five families of mangroves. Uh, we have the black mangroves, the red mangroves, the white mangroves, uh, the mangrove apples. And these are what we see. We see a lot of black, uh, we go into a black mangrove forest or a red mangrove forest and it's not obvious what's black and what's red unless you're a, a taxonomist. If we look at geography, again, I mentioned at the beginning of the lecture that about 118 countries have reported that they have mangroves. But the mangroves are concentrated in just a few countries. 118 countries, but 75% of the mangroves we have today are found in just 15 countries. That includes 42% of the mangroves are found in Asia and 21% are found in Africa. So those are the strongholds of the mangroves. Uh, you see some in North and Central America, primarily the Caribbean. You see some in Oceania, Australia, New Guinea, uh, Papua New Guinea, uh, islands down there, and about 11% of are found in South America. Again, you take a look at the band for the tropics and the subtropics. Specifically, if we take a look at a map of the world, the mangroves are where you expect them. Let's look over here at the Americas first. 
you can see area every area that's marked in red has the potential to have mangroves. You can see that there are a lot of potential mangrove areas in the Caribbean, in northern South America where you're subtropical, tropical or subtropical, along the Carib uh, along Central America's coasts on both sides, uh, a little bit in Baja, California. You go uh, to the Old World, you go to Africa, mangrove forests along the coasts of Western Africa, along the Red Sea, along the coasts of Tanzania, um, Mozambique, Madagascar. We go to Asia, and remember 42% of the mangrove forests are in Asia. Uh, Southeast Asia is loaded with mangrove forests. Uh, you take a look at Thailand, uh, Bur um, Myanmar, um, southern China. Indonesia has all kinds of mangrove forests. And you see mangroves across northern Australia and some of the other islands in the uh, Pacific. That includes the northern part of the northern island of New Zealand. This is the historic range of mangroves. You don't see them once we get out of the subtropics. You're not going to see them in cent off the coast of North America or uh, Central North America or Europe. We look for mangroves in the United States. You can see Florida stick down here. You would expect to find mangroves. And then you can see some red dots for mangroves along uh, the Gulf Coast. So where our mangroves are? Indonesia has most mangroves in the world still, about 42,000 square kilometers of um, mangroves are found in Indonesia. Indonesia has a very fast loss rate of mangroves. Uh, second rank country would be Brazil with over 17,000 kilo uh, square kilometers of mangroves. Malaysia has a lot of mangroves. Papua New Guinea, a lot of mangroves. You go back to our map and you can see definitely that uh, where these red areas are. Northern Australia has a lot of mangroves. But you can see just these first four countries with more than 6,000 square kilometers of mangroves really dominate the scene. Australia ranks fifth. The United States ranks 15th. There's about 1,500 uh, square kilometers of mangrove swamps in the United States. Again, to say a little bit more about geography, Nigeria has the largest uh, set of mangroves in Africa. We go to the United States, mangrove forests are limited to southern Florida, south Louisiana, and south Texas. In Asia, probably the biggest mangrove forest in the world is, is the Sundarban, which is along the Ganges, uh, Brahmabita Deltas, uh, in eastern India and Bangladesh. Uh, you see uh, documentaries on this region. Uh, it's basically the last home of the Asian tiger, uh, thick mangrove forests. We get down to the United States and look at where we, we may find mangroves. As you would expect, along the coast of southern Florida, that's mangrove habitat. A lot of it's been cleared. Uh, along the coast of Florida, uh, you think of things like Padre Island, South Padre Island. You'll see some mangrove uh, forests here and along the Louisiana coast. Not that extensive, but we do have those biomes. We do have that biome in the country. Here's an aerial view of a mangrove swamp in Florida. Can be pretty expensive, uh, extensive in Florida, particularly in South Florida. As sediment comes off the land, if the mangroves are left alone, humans don't interfere with them, the mangroves can actually expand. Uh, here's a mangrove forest. Uh, you get some land that's becoming shallower and shallower as sediment's coming off the land and you're starting to see some mangrove colonies where humans don't interfere, that the mangroves do come back. I said we lost probably half the mangrove forest in the world in the last 50 years. Uh, it's really hard to put a number on it, uh, but that's the uh, 
Paul estimate. This is how we've lost our mangroves. 25% uh, of our mangroves have been lost by converting mangroves to shrimp farms. We're talking about Southeast Asia. 25% of our mangroves have been lost by conversion to agriculture. Oh, excuse me. 20% have been uh, converted by urmer, uh, urban ports, commerce, cities along the coast. And about 10% of our mangroves have been cut down to make land more be uh, better for tourism. Barbados is a good example. I'm sorry I skipped the slide a little too fast. At one time, the coast of Barbados, which is an island in the Caribbean, was uh, the the island edge was 98% mangrove forest. Here's a picture of a remaining mangrove forest on the coast of Barbados, but now mangrove forests only occupy 2% of the Barbados coastline. Now the Barbados coastline looks basic like, like this, 96% of his beaches for tourists. Now that's good for commerce, but the problem is when a hurricane blows in, there's nothing there to protect the shoreline. There's no mangroves there to armor the coast, and the island gets hammered uh, with a hurricane, whereas the mangroves were nature's way of protecting the coast. You actually see in some areas of the world that people have recognized how important mangroves are, probably from selfish reasons, probably because they realize that mangroves are a great fishery. Uh, they spawn and protect lots of small fish that will be caught commercially later on. You lose these mangroves and then you don't have that spawning population. So in many areas of the world, you're starting to see people uh, go out and plant mangrove seedlings, trying to get these forests gone. So I cover mangroves in the ocean unit because it's very important. It protects the oceans from sediment. It armors the coasts uh, from wave action. It armors the coastline from storms. And mangroves are very important to the biodiversity of oceans and to fish catch for humans. Thank you for your attention. All the mangrove swampy areas are found in both the tropical and subtropical areas. Uh, you find them in estuaries, what we would call estuaries, and along marine shorelines. At low tides, organisms, it gets very warm in mangroves. At low tides, the organisms are exposed to increased temperatures and the organisms that live there are exposed to desiccation. When the high tide rolls in, the organisms are cooled and flooded by the tide. So it is a fairly harsh environment. The mangroves mediate, the mangrove trees mediate a lot of this, but it's, uh, it's extremes. Very high temperatures, desiccation, and at high tide, everything's cooled and flooded by the tide. 